I wouldn't want to strong arm you into watching Chinny Vision. Yes, it's finally the video I've been waiting two years to make. Two years ago, I purchased an Acorn A3000, not this one, with the profits from the Chinivision calendar. I got a monitor, a computer, a printer, loads of discs and lots of stuff. Got it home, it turned on, and then it did little else because basically the problem with these is they've got a battery inside them. And nobody, when you buy one, unless they're an Acorn enthusiast, has replaced that battery since new. The battery is in a particularly poor spot on the main board, and hopefully I've got some photographs of my one to show you. And when it leaks, it rots away vital keyboard controller components, and they just fall off. And the chips aren't necessarily replaceable unless you get them from another Acorn. So, yeah, mine went off to be repaired, but I haven't seen it since. Futures 8-Bit has lent me his Archimedes A3000 instead. And uh, Chitty Vision Pen's there. Um, Help me buy stuff for the channel. Well, because <laughs> we'd like one of these of our own, really, to do reviews on. But that big thanks to Futures 8-Bit, because actually he also, with this one that he's lent me, he's got it up and working and uh, put on a extra little treat here, which enables you to use an Amiga or ST mouse with it. Um, so that's why that's hanging off the side. Uh, this one's coming out of a school, but we're going to details of that um, very shortly. Let's do a little bit of the history first. So the Acorn Archimedes is the replacement or the next generation of the BBC Micro. In fact, this unit here, the Archimedes, I keep calling it, I'm nearly calling it an Omega 3000, A3000, Archimedes 3000, is the last computer to feature the BBC Micro Computer System logo. And basically, this boils back down to the original BBC Micro and Acorn were using that and designing that and making new products for that. They decided the 6502 in it and was very limited and they'd had no say in its design. And they wanted to have their own processor. So in 1983, set about designing one. And that was with Sophie Wilson and Steve Ferber. And they found, in fact, they didn't need massive resources of a company like Intel or Motorola to design a chip and they actually designed the first ARM chip on a BBC Micro with a second 6502 processor to run all the simulations. The first ARM chips were received by Acorn in April 1985 and let's put that in perspective neither the Spectrum 128 or the Amstrad CPC 6128 were yet to the market so that's a 32-bit processor with um, risk processing April 1985. Now, Acorn fans will, and certainly a friend I went to sixth form with, would try and convince you that Acorn invented the RISC chip, and that's not true. It was invented by IBM in the early 80s and, in fact, led on to the PowerPC. Now, what we have with the RISC chip inside here, the strong arm, as it, as it was known, the arm chip, was the start of the ARM architecture, which dominates phones, small computers, and you know, here's my phone here, that's got an ARM in it. Don't even need to look inside that, that's got an ARM in it. Um, and that dominates tablets and small computers and all sorts of devices today, even one inside the Amstrad emailer. So it's not all good news. And people also think this was the first time a wrist chip was used inside an Acorn computer. It wasn't, or the ARM chip was first used inside an Acorn computer. It wasn't. It was available as a very limited run of expansions for the BBC Master would have been very expensive and indeed was, I'm not sure it was even publicly sold. Acorn had them, developers had them. It was designed to let people develop stuff for the ARM chip and it was via the tube interface, which is the second processor slot on a BBC Master. So inside this computer here is an ARM 2 processor, not the initial ARM chip from 1985, an ARM 2. It's 32-bits. Well, a 32-bit data bus and 26-bit addressing, which is a bit of a minor niggle, really, especially if you're making the jump from 8-bit computers like a BBC Micro or Master. Um, transistor count, because its risk is half that of the Motorola 68000. What we want to talk about today is this computer here and the Archimedes. And the first Archimedes, and this isn't one, this is one from 1989. The first ones came out in 87. 
and they were incredibly groundbreaking for the time. They ran four and a half million instructions per second. In comparison, um, a 8086 chip could run 330,000 instructions per second. So this one can eat PCs of the era for breakfast. So the three initial models were the A305, A310, and A440. Cheapest model, 799, and more expensive was £1,399. Quite a lot in 1987. But this machine cost 649 a 1989 when it launched, and it was replaced by the A3010-3010 in 1992, which is a slightly sexier one with green keys and a slightly reduced price of 499 which is still eye-watering. Uh, you'll notice the size of the unit. I didn't whip it in as I usually do with these things. Um, it's so big, in fact, you, and that's plastic. You can't put a monitor there, but you, I've got the official Acorn stand, which you sit either side, which we'll see later in action and with an 8 megahertz arm 2 processor inside one meg of ram unless this has been expanded we'll see when we open them up and it has five screen modes uh up to 800 by 616 colors or uh 640 by 512 in 256 colors comparable with the amiga in some ways but the palette's more limited because you can only pick 16 colors from those 256 so um you're limited in the kind of palette choices you've got can do an unofficial mode of 1152 by 896 in two colours, if you so fancy. 4096 colours, and there's one hardware sprite available. And sound is eight channels in eight bits, but is time multiplexed. That's all the technical stuff out the way. Let's get the Chinivision pen out the way. You're probably bored to tears by now looking at this thing. Uh, I haven't cleaned it up because it's not mine, so I don't want to start doing abrasive things on here. This belongs to the future's 8-bit. As I say, it has come out of a school as we're finding this one's got a hard disk in it as well, which is quite handy. It's got that slightly cheap acorn feel to it um, in a way you don't get with Amigas. There's just something that acorn couldn't quite grasp. This is a premium expensive machine, but we'll do some quite cheap feeling plastics on it. And yeah, there's a quite a bit of flex on there. And when you press the keys, that flexes as well. It's, it's not great, but hey, the power's inside. Flip around to the side, and we've got a very grubby disk drive on the side there, and round to the back. Big expansion port there. Now, the point of that is this is a new feature for this model. That's got a full expansion bus there, but you're not going to be hanging just one thing off of there if you're a power user. What you're going to do is have a little cable that runs to another box, and then it has all your expansions inside it. Uh, you've got a parallel printer port there. Serial upgrade is not fitted. So, um, I don't know if that even works or not. Headphone stereo out there. Mono video out. I don't know why they... Acorn. Analog RGB, which you need a special connector for. But it will go to SCART in standard screen modes. And we've got an expansion port there, which is metal, not plastic. Which, actually, the entire back is metal. That could be do with, to do with the hard disk that's in there internally. As per Acorn, with the Master and the BBC Micro, fitted power supply cable and moulded plug. Very unusual for the era. Um, looks like a washing machine kind of style plug, but hey, all moulded on. No need to, for the kids to be unplugging your computer, because this thing's intended to go into a classroom. The entire case is held together with two screws and clips, and it's uh, very easy to break, so you've got to be very careful when you're opening it up. On the side, we have on-off switch there. Inspected by Rod Hull 2018. I've had this for six months. This is how far behind Chini Vision is currently running with videos. Um, some of the stuff I've had for a year. This has been sitting here for six months. So thanks to Rod for his patience. Underneath, let's have a look. Oh, it weighs a ton. Which way around does it go? Serial number 1115137. So I presume that's machine 5137. Don't know how date codes work for Acorn. And you've got this thing over here, which is the annoying uh, Atari ST style. Let's stick all the really useful ports that you need out of the way. Um, and this isn't standard, as you will gather. Um, that's the expansion port there. It is not, not PS2. You cannot plug a PS2 in there. It's an Acorn proprietary system with many, many, many pins that plugs in there. And uh, this is an Acorn mouse here as well. This is my one, but Rod didn't know I had one. 
So he did this very kind mod on here that lets you plug in an ST or Amiga. I think it's an Amiga mouse, actually. But as I, said, I don't need that because hey, I've got a, I've got one of these mice. Like hen's teeth, do not throw it away. If you see one and you ever think you're getting an Archie, buy one. It's a Xerox star three button mouse. Um, you need that third button for the operating system. As I say, if you ever see one, and it's a proper Archie one, you'll know that because it's got this weird one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pin connector on it. Just grab it in a charity shop or what have you, because you will thank yourself when you actually get an Archie. Right, let's have a look inside. And I do have permission to do this from Rod. And what I also want to say is I am not an Acorn expert. Now, last time I said this, Somebody watched the video, and it was the BBC Master video, and they had a complete breakdown on a forum because I named one chip wrong. I mean, they literally got banned. That's how bad they had a breakdown over me just, you know, and I wasn't even posting, I don't think. He just saw this, somebody asked, post, say, hey, have a look at this video, and I just pointed to one chip going, I'm not quite sure about this, but, and yeah, a complete post all just, yeah. So, we're having a look for fun. Chinny Vision is not to be ingested. It's not to be taken seriously. When I'm talking about some things, I do know what I'm talking about. Sometimes, I don't. And when I don't, I will say it. Also, I generally don't work from the scripts, and I try and do it on the hoof. So, if I get things wrong, um, I will try and own up, like that Spectrum I screwed up with the acetone. Oh, what joy. Now, Rod did say, be careful about something or other. But as that was six months ago, I've completely forgotten what he was saying being careful about. So, so right. Taking the master screw out from underneath. And, oh, it's coming apart already. Right, let's get this clear. Get my headphones out of the way. And that should just lift up. There we go. Oh, we've got lots going on here. Right, let's have a good look right so we're inside um and it, yes it, rod's done the, rem the remedial work inside here but it's done no cleaning of it we've got a hard disk a seagate hard disk it's 120 meg big um actually no even not bad for the era that's 120 floppy disks 720k disk drive in here i think we've got some kind of expansion there Morley Electronics A3000 RAM card, extra RAM. We've got more memory. Look at those chips there. Look at them across there. You don't see RAM like that usually mounted in that way. And that must be the original RAM down in there. Can I lift this keyboard up? It does come up here. I don't want to start unplugging things because ribbon cables and elderly computers. Right, let's flip that upside down if we can without tearing anything no we can't right i'm going to hold it right that looks new let's go down close into there this is where the trouble begins this is a brand new battery here now what happens with these is people put them away in the attic it was all working fine and the little battery there leaks everywhere it destroys those chips there and there and sometimes onto there as well and some of those chips aren't replaceable um well they are replaceable if you've got a breaker if you haven't got a breaker tough because there's no new ones i can't see fully detailed it might be that one there that's the biggest problem i could be wrong uh, this is all obviously rod's modification there so ignore those mods there because that's not standard but that's what you're looking for there that leaks and indeed the ones in this one had leaked but not too badly um but it writes off this this problem writes off so many archies and amiga 3000 and 4000s as well because they they just leak acid and rot the components and melt the trace on the pcb my one was just uh, you touched it and these little bits here those little diodes, I think, all resistors. I can't, I'm at a funny angle here, so I'm pointing at, I don't know what I'm pointing at. I just fell off. Just literally touched them, they fell off. It was so much acid over the board. And the boards are so small as well, and they come out with just a couple of screws. 
Um, you see how big this machine is actually. Why is it so big? Um, it could be a lot smaller. Did, is it because it's expensive? Acorn wanted it to feel like a more expensive unit than, you know, than it actually was in terms of size. Um, I don't know. A bit odd. You've got an all-in-one power supply like the BBC Micro up in the corner there. And I imagine there's probably capping issues needing to be addressed at some stage in there. But it should be no, no serviceable parts within, yeah. Um, and all your boards mount on the back here. So, yeah, that board there was some kind of disc expansion. In fact, there's two boards. Is that the same part, the same one? Something going on there. Power looks like it goes onto the board the same way the BBC Micro does with those spade connectors, or certainly the master. But it's not an awful lot in there. They've really, it's not as fussy as the BBC Master, with, which has all those chips inside. They've really managed to get it down. The stuff hidden underneath the disk drive, I don't want to, because it's not my machine, I don't want to strip this down and, and really screw it up. So, you know, we've had a quick look inside. I do want to find the arm chip, though. If I can see it, I'm just going to have a quick peek and see if I can see it. Right, I've just gone inside, and VLSI are the people who made the chips for Acorn and the arm chips. So I'm going to guess, in fact, I know because it says arm, that chip there is the main CPU, the arm chip, arm 2, and that's the memory controller there. Um, and I'm taking that on the basis of a little bit of knowledge and the fact it's labelled on the board, so if I'm wrong, don't have a meltdown. Uh, all these chips over here as well are socketed, if we go over there, which is quite handy. So I imagine they're ROMs of some description uh, for the system. Um, and, yes, as I said before, the keyboard controller and various bits are over there. And, and one thing you should know, the thing you should know is if you buy one of these, and the person turns it on, it just comes up, no keyboard. That's a warning sign the battery has failed and melted bits of the motherboard because the keyboard as i say the controllers next to the um battery and when the battery melts it melts the chips and the acorn's perfectly happy it just can't see a keyboard because the keyboard controllers bits have rotted away and what seems like a simple problem you think oh it's a duff membrane or a dodgy ribbon cable or something no it's rot down there be very very careful um, with these. They're lovely machines, but there's serious problems down there, that end, uh, that mean that even if the machine boots, you're going to have problems. If you're lucky, this one apparently escaped fairly unscathed, and Rod has the technical knowledge and the kit to repair it. But if one of those chips down there had gone, that would have been completely different. While it's open, talk about the keyboard as well. It's not keyboard in the way it's not too bad but it does have a tendency to flap around a little bit and yeah these are proprietary so if they are um i think i don't think these are individually switched like the master i could be wrong there i it looks i don't want to take this apart because it's not mine i think these are probably membrane based which would be more common for this era switch keyboards were pretty much out with the arc by this stage um, but I'm still intrigued by that RAM it's a huge old RAM expansion that sits so high um, big old RAM chips there really surprising just noticed at the top here another VLSI chip marked uh, week 31 1991 so this machine's fairly late for an A3000 my one if I ever see it again is marked uh, I think 1989 so it's an earlier one but it's there, there appears to be these three chips that are all related to the ARM uh, CPU, the CPU there, the memory controller there, and the IOC chip there. A lot more socketed chips as well up there. So a lot of stuff socketed designed to be replaced if needed. My, my, we've had fun the last half hour. One CMOS reset later, and hopefully this is going to boot. Waiting. Oh yes, please, please do this. Um, the CMOS had corrupted itself, and yay, yay, phew. Right, that was um, a CMOS corruption error. Then um, hold down delete on start, and uh, it will sort it out for you. Here we are on the Acorn desktop on an Acorn Philips monitor. 
Um, mono speaker, annoyingly, on this monitor. This is the Morris I got with the Archie, Archie that I purchased. Um, it's been used for Chini Vision for various things. And it all sits nicely on this unit. Let's get you closer into the screen and we'll have a look at the desktop. You can see they've got the taskbar down the bottom and an empty kind of space up the top. You've got a three button mouse and you can click on things and that will click on left opens things up. Right doesn't do anything at the moment and middle gives you options. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit odd when you come over to this first of all. Certainly I found this at school, kind of three buttons. It's the Xerox system. Task shows you there what's available, memory 3976K and watch 80k all this display in 80k it's not a lot is it really and applications free blah 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 all good stuff now that's our palette there we must be in a 16 color mode at the moment that's absolutely fine we've got the apps there open that up you've got paint and here's a rookie mistake right nothing's happening nothing's happening nothing's happening nothing's happening why are there four paint icons down the bottom because that's how it rolls, right? <laughs> you, it opens it up, it puts it down there, you go down there, you can click on it, and bam, you can do this. And we're in the paint package, so I can go da 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 does that take a screenshot or copy? I don't know. Years since I played around with this. Um, 1994, probably. Doing this all from memory and because my mate, who was a mad at sixth form, he was a mad Acorn user. He had two risk PCs, one of them absolutely pimped up, which included an Intel board on the inside of a PC emulator. Because, of course, you know, PCs suck. But got to have an emulator inside so I can actually do something pr productive. Um, he also had a portable Acorn laptop as well with mono screen. Goodness knows how much this would cost. And um, he ended up working for an Acorn dealer, which ended, as you imagine, with them no longer selling Acorns because there were no longer any Acorns to sell. So th these are the kind of built-in free apps here. And you've got a configure app there. Again, even down there, go down there. You can set things up, your mouse, your screen and so on, what kind of screen you've got, LCD, oh, that'll be for the Acorn um, laptops, won't it, Super VGA, VGA, Multiscan, Hi-Res, Maya, blah, 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 interlace, it knows what it's got, so that's fine, various other options in here, um, for you to look at your printer, your network, and so on, close that down, your floppy disk is there, we've got nothing in the floppy disk drive at the moment, so would they say drive empty, I hope the picture's okay as well. I'm pointing it at the screen because why not? This is a Philips monitor that came with the Acorn that I bought. Um, still has its protective coating on the Acorn logo there. Um, it, it, Acorn brand, it's a Philips. Oddly enough, it only, despite all the capabilities of this machine sound wise, one mono speaker in the side. And in fact, at the moment, the audio is going to come out of the system itself because it's got a crap speaker built into the side like the master. You know, 8 bit, 8 channel audio, PCM. And we put a crap speaker in the side because we're Acorn. Uh, let's have a look at the hard disk. All right, so we've got some apps in here. This is coming out of a school. I don't know what's on here. Let's hit Romans. Romans. It's a full preemptive multitasking system, by the way. Windows could not do any of this. It was the Amiga and the Archie at this time that had the advanced modern operating systems and multitasking we could run two tasks or more at once and it would share CPU time, not task switching like, oh, on the PC. Right, what's this? You're exploring Villa Alba. Is this where they make the cheap hi-fis? Right. Um, I have to hope this is, this is really fast. I mean, right, this machine is a risk processor running it faster than many computers and this is running yeah these children must have had patience of a saint can i go in there oh we're in the kitchen help 
Is it the kitchen where you make some bread? Oh, I can pick things up. I smash things. Knives that stab it. No, no, no. Put that in there. That's got water in it. We're going to make some bread, but I mean, that's got flour. There's the bowl. No, 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 no. Butter in there, presumably? I don't know. I'm um, leave, leave, leave. You are exploring villa. This is like um last ninja. But, but not. <laughs> it, it's so not like last ninja. Anyone need the toilet from all that noise going on? Come on, is that coming out the monitor? Is that coming out the? It is not coming out the monitor. God, you get bored. Nothing is happening. You're exploring Villa Elba. Oh, it's going to do some accessing. You're in the dining room. Presume you have to eat, make bread and then eat it. We've got bread, so why are we making bread? Help. All the oil lamps need to be lit to be... All the oil lamps need to be lit to brighten up the room. It's like flunky. Perform manual tasks. Yeah, anyway. And I'll get rid of this. Romans. Can I get info on this? Can you give me info? Zigzag. Zigzag the Romans Historical Simulation by Trev Thomas Nunns and Peter Oxley, Logan and Logotron, BBC 1996. Well, this is not a very good demonstration of what the Archimedes is capable of, but unfortunately it's a very good example of the kind of thing the Archimedes was used for. Um, flair. I have no idea. None. What this could be. Flare. Ooh, full screen. Ooh. It's a paint package for kids, presumably. I tell you what, a particularly fast one. I mean, considering, again, the speed of the machine... It's not as responsive as you th think it might be. Hello? No, can I draw there? What's that? I mean, really, this kind of effect is a kind of 8-bit demo effect from the, well, the Amstrad CPC basic manual, to be honest. Yeah, how do I get out of here? I wonder if I want to find some kids' files, because they're always the best when you find stuff they've actually done. I've got some floppies here. With Zah. <laughs> well, um, with no planning or prompting, some kids have saved their work to the Archimedes. I think we're going to have some gold here. We need, let's go for Belinda. Do we have Trove? Longman logo Again, Longman logo on 1996. Right. Belinda Zoe G. Hanna. This is the result of an entire lesson in 1996 with Belinda Zoe and Hanna. Is that you, Zoe Kirk Robinson? Oh, Zoe G. Can't be. Belinda and Hanna. It's unlikely to be people watching this channel. How old will these people be by now? Mm. Oh, probably in their mid-thirties, I would imagine. Claire, let's try Claire. The <laughs> UK. Oh, I knew it would be 
gold. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. The UK is indeed Belinda. Oh. Hannah got in. It's Hannah from S Club 7. To mum, I hope you're well today. Love, Hannah. This was a good word processing. This is, oh, this is what I wanted. This is what I wanted. What's Zoe up to? Hmm, you did well. Yeah, Zoe appears to have problems with language. So what you're now watching is the very last thing recorded for this video, even after I did the conclusion, because all I needed to do was a simple bit of capture. After all, I've been using this machine for weeks. I had the capture set up, I went away to have my tea, came back, turned the Archimedes back on, dead. Uh, wouldn't boot to desktop, said all the ROMs were unplugged, and what we think's happened is the CMOS chip, which is also located next to the battery, has gone faulty, possibly from the original battery leak that uh, Rod repaired. So then um, it got interesting because there was a delay of a couple of weeks, and I bought from Rob from the Stardot forums another A3000 using all of the channel funds. It's got a compact flash card and it's all set up and ready to go. And this is the machine we're looking at now for capture. Although bear in mind when I come to the conclusion, it's still Rod's machine instead. So here we are on the desktop of this other Archimedes. And we've got four hard disks on the compact flash there. So we've got a games directory. Here we go, we've got some games installed on the hard disk. Let's try Pac-Mania. Known to be a good conversion back in the day. Uh, it, superior to the Amiga and ST versions. And it's programmed by Chrysalis and got music by Ben Daglish. And yes, it's a very nice port indeed. Full screen, 50 hertz motion, the full Ben Daglish soundtrack. And just that slight edge over the Amiga version. Speaking of Amiga games, what more of an Amiga game is there than Cannon Fodder? And I wasn't even aware this made it over to the Archimedes. Um, here we go, the, the famous Cannon Fodder song. And they appear to have added a little bit of extra echo as well. And it plays exactly as Cannon Fodder plays on the Amiga. Very nice port indeed. Elite is known to run particularly well on the Archimedes. And here we go, look at how fast this 3D is. I'm just going to whiz through a few games here. Chopper Force is another game on the hard disk I've got here. It's a helicopter flight simulator slash shooter where you fly around a city. Not a game I'd heard of before. But a nice 3D world. This is Lander. I haven't managed to get Zarch running yet, but Lander is the predecessor of that came free with every Archimedes machine. Very nice demo of the tech. Mind-blowing in 1987. When this came out, when you were playing your Spectrum and Amstrad games, look at this. I imagine there's procedural generation involved in this, It's given who, uh, who coded the game. There's lots of other games and software installed on the hard disk that I will investigate another time. I want to say thank you to Rob from Stardot for kindly selling us his spare Archimedes and setting it up so well. So there's loads of stuff to use on there. And also thank you to the channel's Patreon supporters who paid for this. This Chinivision doesn't have adverts, so the only money we've got is what comes in from Patreon and the people who buy the pens as well. And then that goes back into the channel. So thank you to everyone who supports Chinivision. Right, we now go back to a few weeks ago for the conclusion. So then, the Acorn Archimedes a very, very capable and powerful system intended to change the world 
by Acorn, but didn't change the world in, world in quite the way they intended. I think they probably thought this would blow everyone else away and everyone would want one. And the reality was, it was what was inside that changed the world. The ARM processor, the processor that the descendant of, is in your phone, probably your TV, uh, probably got might have one in your car. Um, you've probably got 10, 20 of them in your house somewhere. Even the Amstrad emailer for the horrific device that it is, at the core of that device back in 2001 has an ARM processor. The machine also has a really nice operating system. I think this is up there. Aesthetically, it's nicer than Workbench. All Amiga owners are going to be annoyed. It's it's slightly nicer to use. The Workbench is very powerful. Um, can be a little bit pernickety at times. But I think actually in terms of power, they're probably about the same. Way ahead of GEM and DOS and Windows at the time. The Amiga and the Acorn systems really led the way. And I do like this. I come back to this, and I've I genuinely not really properly used this for years. And just to come back in and how it all works with clicking on things, and then uh, it appears down the bottom, and it doesn't in that case. But if I hit draw, it will. <laughs> and that stuff, and the memories of flooding the bottom with things because you expected it to work like Workbench or Gem, um, you know, uh, all come flooding back. The system's very powerful, great graphics capabilities, great sound capabilities. Shares um, the same problem as the BBC Micro in that the other systems, the other 8-bit systems, Commodore, the Spectrum, the Amstrad, all had the large software houses supporting them and competing against each other, the Oceans and the productivity companies as well. And on the Amiga, companies like Electronic Arts producing D-Paint, and all those specialist applications like Lightwave, like um, Scalar, and uh, many other packages as well on the Amiga from such smaller but software houses that knew they could make enough money selling it into into the kind of the market because the Amiga had much bigger pen penetration. The Archimedes suffers from the thing that the BBC Micro suffers from: nice hardware, sometimes shame about the software, sometimes feels a little bit homebrew. Uh, knocked together by a bloke in his back bedroom or a small company above a shop somewhere. Never seems to really push the system. And this is not just my criticism. There was an article in New Computer Express around 1990 which summed up all the new 16-bit and 32-bit systems and the advantages and disadvantages. And it came to the conclusion, and I'm paraphrasing because I've not read this article for years now, they do no longer have a copy, but it said, the thing about the Archimedes is it's the most powerful system and it's fantastic, but... The software's lacking. The, they they said actually, and it was time must be on the time of the Gulf War. They should send one of these to Iraq and give it to Saddam Hussein because he'd think, "Hey, I've got a brilliant, powerful system here," but then he'd be screaming for mercy because he couldn't get um, good enough software that really exploited it for it, and that's a real shame. Uh, it's also a real shame this ended up being mainly in the educational market because. It's so much better than that. The hardware is so much better than tatty educational titles that could be running on any system. That Roman software, the paint software and stuff like that, that's there's nothing, that's not even remotely touching what this hardware can do. It did get used in industry. The BBC used these because it's a BBC you know, computer originally. And they up until the introduction of HD, they were still generating the lottery numbers live on Archimedes, they're typing the numbers as they happen, and you can see all that stuff at the Computer Museum. Noel's House Party and shows like that use these for their graphics. Uh, not particularly this model, by the way, probably much later, RISC OS um, boxes. But uh, Ace, Ace 7000s, I think, the final ones were. But the Genesis is here, the desktop's the same. If you're looking to add one of these to your collection, bear in mind they're very expensive and you've got the battery rot issue because you could get one that seemingly works and then it's got horrible rot issues on the inside. I'd say don't put it at the top of your list for collection because ultimately what you're going to do with it, um, it's not something you're going to sit down and play games on every night, it's something you're going to tinker with and play with and it's nice to own, but it, it's not on that essential list like a Commodore 64 is, like a Spectrum is, like an Amiga is. It's not even on that second tier 
of systems really like the vic 20 and sorry vic owners and and so on it, it's it's on that third tier of niche nice to own especially if you can come across one systems as i say it didn't change the world itself but the processor inside did i think it's a very unique and special system and one i'm going to certainly do some more videos on here on Chini Vision before it goes back and get a big thank you to the Futures 8-bit because this video has been two years in the making and uh, I finally made it.